in developing cloud-based labs, in specific here, we're looking at physical chemistry or PCHEM. Um, one of the things we often want to be able to do is access instrumentation remotely. And while we often want to do this with a more general cloud web interface, one of the common uh, things to do is to use virtual network connection, VNCs, in programs like AnyDesk, No Machine, Mesh Central, you know, uh, remote desktop, etc. And so today we're going to be looking at accessing a differential scanning calorimeter at Arizona State University uh, using uh, specifically AnyDesk. And so I'm jumping to um, my client side of AnyDesk, which you can download for uh, free and um, use on a Mac, Windows, Linux uh, system, etc. I have aliases set up over the IDs, and we're going to be looking at um, the DSC uh, instrument, which I've already connected to. So I have a separate tab where now we're looking at a live view of us connected to um, the computer that is running the DSC that is shown here on the right. So going through this, we have on the right, we have something where we're viewing our various webcams. And so you can see we have a general lab view. Um, we have the front of the DSC, which we were just seeing. You can see we have one over here, which would be the sample tray. Um, and then we also can view the cell. So we'll go back to this. And this is just so you can get a more in-person um, type experience of a live view of the DSC as though you were in front of it, as though you were at the computer or in the lab directly. So that's what this is allowing. And again, um, uh, what this is is the software that runs the DSC. It's a TA Instruments DSC 2500, and this is the TRIO software. Uh, this is also available um, to download the light version where you can just do data workup in this. And so the other thing I've done is um, I have uh, for an ASU online course, we have um, a Google Cloud stuff set up where, you know, we have the information about running uh, this system, etc. So what I've done is set up um, an experiment and I've already uh, got on here and given it a name, you know, I know based on where uh, the samples are here, you know, uh, because we've listed them as we weighed them out and made these. Um, we've listed them, you know, on a Google Sheet. Uh, so I have all the information. I have the references set up, um, which were set up in the tray. These are the reference samples. So you could find out which, which ones of these are the reference samples and which ones are the samples, etc. So um, We'll go back to the design queue. Okay, so we're designing an experiment here. This is a basically all the information where it's going to be saved on the local drive. And most importantly, the procedure we're going to use. And I've saved this procedure, so we're going to um, turn the data off. We're going to equilibrate at 40 degrees, which is where it is right now. We could look in front of the DSC. It tells you right here what temperature it's at. You can also pull it up on this. So we're going to equilibrate. We're going to hold for a minute just to let it be sure. We're going to turn the data on and we're going to ramp at 10 degrees per minute from uh, 40 degrees to 200. We're going to turn the data off. We're going to hold it at 200 for a minute and then we're going to ramp it down to 100 degrees. Um, hold there and then ramp back up to 200. So basically we're going to go through the melting, recrystallize the sample and melt again. Um, so that's going to be our overall procedure that is, you know, outlined, you know, in 
my Google Sheet as well, where we talk more about the sample. Um, so what is in sample position number seven is one of the most common standards for um, differential scanning calorimetry, which is indium wire, which I put in the sample name here. Um, and you know this is telling it to use the default configuration, etc. So now I can take this and I can take it from the design queue and um, put it you know, to the running queue. So I can um, oops, wrong one. I can copy it to the running queue. Now I can go to this running queue and I can start it. And what I'm doing is starting this DSC, we, we should be able to see the live view here. So I'm going to move to kind of a more, uh, so now what we expect it to do based on this is pick up the reference pan, pick up the sample pan, and put them into the DSC. And so I want to make sure using this live view that I'm able to, that it does it correctly and starts this experiment. So often what I do is get on to uh, a live view of this to make sure the instrument is putting the samples in properly and it's doing what I feel like I'm asking it to do remotely. And so I can even go back, I can go to the cell view and see that it puts it into the cell properly so that there's any problems with the auto sampling arm or what it's doing or it has an error or something, I can look at what's going on and contact the people on the ground uh, there to help correct the problem, etc. But still be able to more or less run this as though um, I was at the instrument directly. So I can make sure, you know, it grabbed the samples I wanted. So it grabbed it out of five and seven here. Um, it's putting now that one in as well. Um, and as soon as it does this, it will close the DSC and start the run. So you can see the various cameras. It's, um, you know, nitrogen source here that it's using to purge gas. And I can watch it from the cell view close and that the two samples are in there. And then as soon as it does that, it does switch and now it's going to start collecting the data. So I can go, I recently ran one where, you know, uh, I just made sure the baseline was flat uh, across the temperature range we're going to look at. Now we're going to, um, you know, look at uh, this indium wire and I can set up numerous. So I can go back to the experiment, design a bunch of different things and append them to the running queue and have them run. And so to have this instrument automatically run samples uh, more or less on a 24 seven basis and remotely view it, remotely start experiments, make sure that uh, monitor uh, the instrument to see if there's any issues with uh, changing auto samplers, etc. So hopefully this gives you a quick overview of how you would, um, you know, access instruments and a demo of uh, being able to remotely access uh, instrumentation, in this case, a differential scanning calorimetry to do cloud labs or remote experimental labs. Thank you.